Quick statements version two. So again, this is all linkable from the slides, but we, we, we'll get to where you get to them afterwards. Effectively, it's a tool for taking data from a spreadsheet that you might have from anywhere. You might have downloaded it. Um, today, we're going to be using data from UNESCO. It's real data that needs adding, and it's, um, it's, it's data about endangered languages. So it's quite critical, nice data that we're putting in, but the key thing is we get the, in, the export from them. They donate it to us if they've agreed to do that, and then we need to put it in, and it's perfect to be able to do it from a spreadsheet. The other little thing that, we, that I would very much recommend um, installing, but we don't need it today because I've pre-done this step for us, uh, but basically it's, um, it's this Wikipedia and Wikidata tools for Google Sheets. Um, and I'm going to just show you a quick demo. Oh, I don't have permission, do I? Actually, maybe I'll forget. It's all right. I don't have to use that one for that. One second. OK. So yeah, the idea is you can click on that. And what it is is you have to have a Google account for that. And it's like it will attach it to your Google account so you can always use this tool. Um, and what I will do is I'm going to actually I'm going to use the practical to demo what that does. You're not going to have to do this, but just have a watch and I'll show you how this process is going to work. So the step one, similar to before, we've got another batches spreadsheet. So you can just use your same batch numbers, actually. So I've followed that link. Seem to, is it keeping the presentation somewhere? Yeah, it is, isn't it? Okay. So what we've now done is, sorry, I should have followed that link and stayed there. I'll close down a few of these. Okay. So that's the, um, this is the similar to the last one, your batches, so whichever one you've been given. I'm going to, actually, I'm going to use batch 24 because it's a small batch. It was the one left over on the end. And I've gone through to a, yet another spreadsheet. Now, basically, um, we might find this hovers around for a moment. It's loading now. Now, the reason this is taking a moment to get that data is because I'm using this special Wikipedia uh, for Wikidata tools in the spreadsheet. And it's just already pre-done for you. Um, however, you will have to wait for that to load. Let me just explain how I got here anyway, and this will probably refresh it and make it work. The issue is, is that this was some data from UNESCO. We have their identifier on their database. We've got a name that they've given us for, for these particular languages. And we already have a matching Wikidata item number for each one because we've already done that matching as a community process. So we already have an we know which thing in Wikidata each thing responds to, corresponds to. And we have the URL, uh, the UNESCO URL, where we have this language. And this is the data that we want to add, the country. What, what country is this language associated with? So this looks like it's data ready to add. Great, the country is Mexico. But the problem is we can't add that to Wikidata in that form with quick statements. We need to know what the item number is for all of these countries. And that's where this tool works really well. And I'll, you don't need to learn this command, right? I'm going to try and just run through this. But if you've installed this add-on, then you get these commands. And one of them is Wikidata ID. And I have to click on this. And then when I press Enter, hopefully that's going to work. OK, so that worked. Do you see what it's done? It said it's found that that's not Q96 on Wikidata. And now I can, I can paste that all the way down to the bottom of my list. And hopefully this time, yeah, so that's kind of worked now. And you see next to each of these countries, I've got this corresponding Q number. And that was what was so handy, rather than trawling through Wikidata to try and find out what the numbers were for each one. And now on the quick statements import sheet, which is where you started, that's all filled out. Um, so I think if, when we're doing it, anyone just put their hand up if they, if they haven't got their loading, and we'll just go around and help them. If you can remember from what I just did there, we just deleted it and tried using it again. It should work. Um, now, what we need to do when we're here is just click and drag to select. And actually, I think it's annoying that this is actually a bit small. OK, so sorry, I had to zoom out a bit there because I couldn't see the edge. Uh, so this is now, this is the syntax. Quick Statements has a syntax that you can read on their sheet. But basically, all we're doing is we're saying um, that's the item we're adding the data to in the first column. The next column is the property, which is P17, which is country. And the next prop column is the value, which is the Wikidata item number for the country, as we've calculated. Yeah. 
The next one is, is adding a reference to this same statement. And so instead of using P17 here, his tool uses an S to, to establish that this is actually a reference. And followed by a URL, which needs to be in, um, in inverted commas, which is why it's uh, got a little formula running there. Um, so essentially, this is what you need. And once you've got your data in this kind of format, you can copy it. So I'm just going to copy it to there. So that's just, you can use the edit menu here for copy or any control C or command C on a, on a map. Okay, yep, I agree. Okay, so it's not actually happy to do that there. Um, now, up on the same sheet, I've provided a, a link here to quick statements. So really all you've done at this point is kind of arrived, copied it, and we're going through to quick statements. And you're going to have to log in with your Wikidata accounts that you've just created. So it will say login here. Here it's saying welcome because Ewan's logged in. Um, so you will need to log in here. And you go to import commands. Version 1 format is your only option. It's because we're on version 2 of the tool now. and There's a bit of work in progress. And I've copied from the spreadsheet. And now I'm just going to paste. And it won't look like it makes a lot of sense. It ends up with these tab characters separating where we had different cells. It becomes tab characters. And I just click on import. And what it's now done is convert my sort of Q numbers and P numbers into something more readable. And I can kind of check what it's doing. And it's saying the first thing it's going to do is add a statement to this item. I'm not even going to bother trying to pronounce that language. Um, and then the statement is going to be a country is equal to Mexico which was our, our not P9, Q96. And I, it's a good idea to check maybe the first and the last results just to make sure you haven't got any mismatched columns. I'm sure it's all perfect. I made sure it was pretty, uh, it was pretty accurate, all of these. Um, so actually, maybe in this case, you can trust me. It's all right. We'll just go it because we haven't got a huge amount of time. Um, so basically, once you've checked and you're happy with everything, effectively, you see we've got loads of pages here. Um, in fact, I'll go up to here and say show 100 entries per page still got a couple of pages but now at the very bottom wherever I am I just have to click run and I'm going to just do this now and I think you are going to get these edits you and actually so. so now it's running and if I scroll all the way up to the top you can see what's doing it's just running through them mass editing Wikidata so we're just churning out about one edit a second or something like that. So basically, uh, without further ado, uh, it would be great if everyone had a chance to do this, because if you can just get through to clicking that run button, you've just you know, blasted your account with loads of edits and you become an active editor immediately. Really, once you've imported and you see your commands are accepted and they're legal, that should be that you're OK from that point onwards. But what we can do is just demonstrate the results um, to some extent. So we'll see how many we managed to add. There was very few um, country statements originally, so we really had very little idea about where these countries were. Hopefully this query, which is basically this is, OK. Oh, OK, so it's, we've got something. We've got a start. So you see what this is. This is, an, this is a count of the endangered languages per country, according to UNESCO. So suddenly with that data added, even though we only got half of it, we've got some insight developing about where are the most endangered languages. You know, really good information to have and to be able to analyze and find out you know, why. Why is there so many in this place and not in another? So for someone like UNESCO, that's really important. You know, part of their reason for contributing data was to be able to get these kind of insights. And then, of course, combine it with other knowledge about the world. You know, like, uh, UNESCO might understand these relationships, but then they wouldn't then have the populations of all these countries to so say, how does it compare to the population? You know, how many endangered languages? Is there a correlation? Um, so that kind of shows you one of the, one of the beautiful aspects of, uh, uh, of, you know, of donating and engaging and putting data in. You get all this analysis.